What's up, weirdos, and welcome to the Weirdoverse. I'm your host, JD Ross, and you are tuned into Weird Wide, your favorite digital cult. Today, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, today's episode is going to be a f- the first in a, a, a new ongoing series on Weird Wide, where we're going to look at current events uh, revolving around potential cataclysmic events, existential threats to our little rock in space, and anything else involving the end of the world as we know it. Welcome to the very first Apocalypse Watch. Watch. <laughs> So the first thing on the docket today, we're going to be looking at the Doomsday Clock. Recently, the Doomsday Clock has been moved to 90 seconds to midnight. So what does that actually mean? Well, the Doomsday Clock is a representation uh, run by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists to determine just how close we actually might be to full-blown Armageddon. Now, the clock has been maintained since uh, 1947, and it's a metaphor for threats to humanity from unchecked scientific and technological advances, things like that. They started it uh, around the time of the nuclear, when the nuclear bomb first became a thing. Now, it has fluctuated quite a bit throughout the years. Uh, When it first started in 1947, we were at seven minutes to midnight. So the closer we are to midnight, that equals how close to the end scientists think we actually could be given all the different global threats around the world. It's gone up and down throughout the years. Uh, At one point, it was 12 minutes to midnight. That was in 1963. Uh, That was uh, after uh, there was a uh, treaty called the Partial Test Ban Treaty, uh, which uh, was uh, signed by the Soviet Union at the time and the United States. And it was looking good. Things were looking really good. Uh, but uh, throughout the years, it's it's gone up and down. It's gotten worse. It's gotten better. Uh, 1991, it was actually at 17 minutes to midnight, which is pretty fucking sweet. The Iron Maiden song, Two Minutes to Midnight, is a reference to the nuclear clock, the doomsday clock. Two minutes to midnight. That one, fucking awesome. But 90 seconds to midnight is the closest that the clock has ever gotten to midnight. We've slowly, in the in the last couple of years, seemed like we've started to get worse and worse. I don't know if anybody's noticed. Now, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists is saying that it is largely due, but not exclusively, to the 2022 invasion of Ukraine by Russia. With tensions rising across Europe and other parts of the world, things are just not looking good for us. They've cited about how the war has come close to the Chernobyl site and other other nuclear reactor sites, which actually does violate international protocols and does risk the release of widespread radioactive material. So humanity just seems to outdo itself every chance it gets. We are now 90 seconds to midnight. Ah, let's see if we can get a little closer, right? All right, next on our dock is going to sound familiar to video game fans and people that have HBO subscriptions, The Last of Us. So The Last of Us features a fungal infection by a uh, fungi called cordyceps, which turns the entire population and anybody who comes into contact with it into a zombie and brings society to an apocalyptic halt. But is it a real potential threat? Well, what's scary is cordyceps actually is real. It is a real disease. Uh, The game actually, the game was released in 2013, and it got its inspiration from a piece that David Attenborough did. You know, David Attenborough, the uh, the the basically the the grandfather that everyone loves in the animal science world. The guy that's pretty much on every single nature doc. Watch as the gazelle runs from the lion. That fucking guy. You know that guy. Well, in the piece. Attenborough takes us through a little bit about what cordyceps is and how at the moment it's really more of a threat to like insect species. So he has an ant. Ants are one of the main ones that uh, really have to worry about this because ants are one of the most population dense creatures in the world. So what it'll do is it basically it bypasses the brain and it starts just taking over motor functions. So like that's actually really fucking terrifying. So like it kind of answers like in this particular case answers the theoretical zombie question of like, does the zombie know that they are being a zombie? Like, do they, are they aware of what's going on and they just can't control it? Or are they completely mindless in this particular case? The ant that's taken over by the fungi knows what he's doing from what I can tell. And what it'll do is like the other ants, if they if they sense it, they see what's going on. They'll actually like outcast other ants. They'll like take they'll take other ants that are infected and they'll literally throw them out 
into a fucking ditch somewhere. And they're like, you're not fucking welcome back. Can't come back. But if one goes through undetected, what they'll do is the cordyceps fungus will actually make the ant climb as high as it can until it gets to the highest point it can reach. And that's where it stops. And out of the head of the ant, the fungus will start to kind of erupt and make its way, make, make its way out. It's not quite as dramatic as the show or the game. But after it's gotten to the point where it's out enough, it'll literally spread spores down onto the jungle floor below, which can decimate entire ant colonies. Now, how does that affect humans? At the moment, cordyceps doesn't infect humans. In fact, humans are, are having a really big time with mushrooms right now. Uh, we're doing a lot of the microdosing with the magic mushrooms. We're doing a lot of mushroom foraging, a lot of different shit like that. So we're actually we're, we're pretty cool with mushrooms and fungus at the moment. But one key element might actually change that. And they even alluded to it in the show is what if the planet were to heat up a little bit? As we know, we're in the middle of a major climate crisis where the planet is currently heating up. Uh, we could do an entire Apocalypse Watch episode just on climate change, to be honest. Now, it isn't necessarily cordyceps that we're going to have to watch out for. But what's starting to become more prevalent is a fungus called Candida auris. It's becoming more and more of a concern uh, because of the because the planet is starting to warm up. It's starting to be able to spread more. In fact, in uh, hotter regions, it's actually a big concern in hospitals because it'll show up in hospitals and it'll take immunocompromised patients down. Now, what Candida auris does is, is it causes something called Candidas, can, candidiasis. I don't fucking know. I'm probably saying it wrong, which can be fatal to humans. Basically, a yeast infection or a truth. I think truth is what it's called. But under the right conditions, scientists do believe that it could actually evolve into a serious threat to humanity. So maybe we want to start... Uh, pull them back on fucking up the planet a little bit because it looks like the planet might be poised to fight back. And finally, we're going to move on from frightening shit that nature is going to throw at us to something that we could have completely avoided. Completely man-made terror. There's a lot of buzz going on right now in a lot of the scientific communities about rogue artificial intelligence becoming an existential threat to humanity. Oxford doctoral student Michael Cohen warns, quote, with superhuman AI, there is a particular risk that is a different sort of class, which is it could kill everyone. His colleague Michael Osborne says that advanced AI could pose as much risk as we've posed to other species. The dodo is one example. And while science fiction has predicted uh, such frightening outcomes for decades now, uh, a new and powerful artificial intelligence is out on the market called Chat GPT. It's making a lot of real world people compare it to a potential Skynet scenario. Now, this new tech is coming from a firm that is backed by Elon Musk called OpenAI, which I'm going to be real honest. Uh, the fact that Elon Musk is anywhere near the project should be a warning that it's probably not going to go well in some way, shape or form anyway. And it has been described as a scary good AI, uh, able to crunch extraordinarily complex and specific tasks in seconds. It's actually already been banned from some school districts because it's considered like the perfect cheating tool. And of course, civilian applications for things like this are fantastic. Like you can basically you you can you can give it the most specific directions and it'll create it like in no time. So like it was tested by like Ryan Reynolds uh, to basically to create because he, he owns the mint mobile. He owns the mint mobile company. So he basically had it create an ad for mint mobile and he gave it very specific directions, include one swear word, have a little bit of sarcasm, do this, do that. And it came out exactly how he had asked it to. So the civilian applications are fucking awesome. You know, it's it, you could have it compose a sonata. Some people are starting to have it compose fucking sermons, which is terrifying in itself. But it never stays in the civilian circles. The problem is technology like this is always going to move to the next arena. It's always going to become a what military applications are there. Some experts believe that we are entering a new form of an arms race, actually, with AI being at the forefront of it where countries and corporations even will compete to have the best AI system in place, which will then, of course, be put in charge of the uh, weapon systems and the nuclear arsenals, and the Terminator franchise will cease to be fiction and will become an actual reality. 
I mean, I swear to God, it's like there's there's everyone that like reads a sci-fi book or sees a sci-fi movie. They just have this like, I bet you I could fix them. I could fix it. Like, no, you can't. Like Elon Musk is like basically literally like I could keep Skynet in check. If if I had run Cyberdyne systems, I would have kept Skynet from becoming self-aware. No, the fuck you wouldn't. You're a fucking moron. And anyone anyone who thinks they can control this fucking thing, they're going to plug it into everything and they're probably going to blow us all to hell. So which would you rather have happen in this particular case? Would you rather have the zombie apocalypse from an out-of-control fungal infection that we caused because we fucked up the planet? Or would you rather have nuclear Armageddon caused by a rogue artificial intelligence? I want you to let me know. I want you to email me at weirdwidepodcast at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm on there as Dudas Weirdo. Hit me up in the DMs with that if you want to let me know uh, what you think about that. Or any uh, ideas you have maybe to stop the apocalypse from happening in these particular cases. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to follow me uh, for new episodes. are coming out uh, every just about every Wednesday. I'm not going to promise every Wednesday. Mostly weekly. That's what I'm saying. Mostly weekly they're coming out. If you're listening on audio only and you like what you hear and you feel so compelled, please go on and give the show a five-star review on Apple. really helps the show. It uh, gives us a lot of uh, little bit more visibility and things like that. I love you all. Stay safe from the apocalypse out there. Make sure to tune in next week for another installment of Strangeness. And until then, keep it weird. Weird.